we need to take back our government and our rights that belong to us, not to Obama, not to the Democrats, not to the Republicans, but we the people. This nation was founded out of a love for mankind and a great gratitude for the opportunity of this great experiment of freedom. I remember hearing the comedian George Burns speak about something that happened when he was a child. He had a lot of brothers and sisters and his family didn't have a lot of money. They didn't even have beds for the children. And one of his siblings asked his mother, well, mom, you know, a lot of the other kids have beds. How come we don't have beds? And his mother replied, she said, be grateful that you have a roof over your head and a floor under you because there's many children in this world that don't even have that. Her reply is a perfect example of the gratitude that we've lost in America that is leading us down the road to ruin. She didn't say the government ought to buy you a bed. She said be grateful, and that's one of the many things that we seem to have lost. I ask you to join each other and myself in love of freedom and take up the courage to claim what has always belonged to us. I ask you to have love for me and help me as I have love for all of you and pledge to help you to ignite our rights <coughs> to save America and our Constitution while we still can. We need to start holding the government and the private sector accountable to us. Two events have set this stage for the American people to make a choice to reclaim freedom recently. The first being the attacks on 9-11, an event that may not have happened had our federal air marshals program not been interrupted without any private security supplement. And yet nobody in our government or the private sector has been held accountable to even something as simple as a gross criminal negligence charge. Instead, we have lost much of our liberty to an increasingly reckless government that, our, while our public is not the least bit more safe as a result. We don't need a war in Iraq. And don't get me wrong, I love our troops and I support them with my whole heart. We don't need a war in Afghanistan. We don't need a war in Iran. We don't need a war on drugs or terror. We need a war on fear and tyranny in America. We need a war on totalitarianism. We need a war on political correctness and indoctrination. We need to win these ideological cold wars to usher in a new renaissance of freedom that will be like a cleansing pure water for a nation and a world that could not be any more dangerously close to being turned into a burning heap of a new dark ages, a world worth, not worth living in anymore. And that will result in civil wars none of us want to see. <clears throat> the second event to set the stage to force this choice to reclaim our freedom right now is the illegal presidency of Barack Hussein Obama, also known as Barry Satoro. You can consider this illegal on any one or as many of these reasons I will list, but to deny all of them is to lie to yourself. ACORN has been suspected of voter fraud in at least a dozen states. We also know it is impossible for Obama to meet the requirement of being a natural born citizen, not only based on a missing birth certificate, but because his father was a citizen of Britain at the time of his birth. And the definition is that a natural born citizen must be born of two citizens of America. Even if this requirement were originally met, there's an Indonesian school record that lists Obama's name as Barry Sotoro, his citizenship Indonesian, and religion Islam. Therefore, if Obama was in fact a natural born citizen in the first place, he, he has clearly renounced it, and then that would nullify any previous natural born status. As a people for our nation to continue to exist, we need to rise up in opposition to all usurpations of power, no matter how small or great. I ask of all of you to stand up and fight to regain our monetary system that has been usurped, our civil liberties that have been usurped, our free markets, our Oval Office, our educational system, our country, our constitution, our respect for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and the heart, of so heart and soul of America. In closing, I would like to share with you something that I shared with the whole country on live TV before on October 8, 2009 when this campaign to ignite our rights first got national attention after this famous or infamous picture, depending on who you are, was taken. I was on Your World with Neil Cavuto that day, and I read a comment from the incumbent in this race 
that was in a Newsday article that featured this picture of me raging at him for disrespecting our people and our Constitution at the town hall meeting on the health care bill. The comment from incumbent Steve Israel read, I'm not going to draw any sands, lines in the sand on this issue. I'm not going to vote against 60% of what I want because I can't get the 40%, the other 40% of what I want. There is no perfection. I read these quotes on Fox News Channel Live and I told Neil Cavuto that I have a message for Obama and Steve Israel and the rest of this country and the rest of this world. And that message is this. I am drawing a line in the sand. It's in front of myself and the Constitution and the American people. And if they think that they are going to continually cross this line in the sand, they have another thing coming. People of America, I urge you, allow a voice of truth outside of the, new ma the two major parties to exist in Washington. Allow some truth to shed some light on the darkness that is a two-party system. Allow a voice that is not afraid to stand up for freedom, unchained. And most importantly, allow yourselves to take America back, to show this nation and this world that the American people are mad as hell and we're not going to take it anymore.